Good morning and welcome to the coverage of YCS Bochum 2015. I'm your host for the weekend, Oliver German, and I'm joined here by our resident expert, Rob Hooley. Hello, good to be here. Yeah, it's, it's good to have you back for the next event. Just a short two months back, we were in Prague for the first event of the year. This is the second one, and we have more than doubled in numbers. Yes, and it looks like luck has struck us twice because it was really nice in Prague, and Bochum is fantastic, and the weather is lovely as well. Yes, or at least it was yesterday. Today it's raining yeah, it a little bit. It kind of rained a little bit, but that's fine because all the players are in here. Yeah, it's perfect weather to do. And also in between rounds you can go outside, get some fresh air with, yep. with the water. So that's, that should definitely be easy. 1,107 players signed up for the event. It's pretty big. Pretty big. Um, with national season upon us, we have heard that a couple of players are saving money, that uh, they want to attend the national championship instead. Yes. And uh, so, because this event is almost leading into national season, really. Yep, and nobody really knows where it is yet, but people are saving up for Europeans. Yes. They're, they're ready and waiting. They're thinking, hmm, do I need money? Do uh, I need money? Uh, I don't know <laughs> if I need money. I have a feeling that we're going to uh, know a little bit more about that event tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. What can you expect? If this is the first time you're watching the stream, we're going to have plenty of features for you. We're going to look over the shoulders of some of the greatest European players in the game and some of the guys that made the trip from the US even. Yes. We're going to talk to them, interview them. We're going to break down their decks and strategies so you at home can also learn how to play the best decks in the best possible way. And on top of that, we're going to have feature matches all day long. Eight rounds today, so eight times you're going to be in for a treat when we see some of, well, world's greatest Necros players, for example. Yep, Necros players and, oh, well, Shadow is coming back. Yes. Which, with, a, with a vengeance, Satella Knights. And it's all because of the new Star Seraph cards, which came out in World Superstars. In case you haven't checked out that set, can you quickly fill us in? What does Star Seraph do? Why is it giving these decks a push? There are two cards, which is Star Seraph Scepter and Star Seraph Sovereignty. Uh -huh. uh, Star Seraph... Scepter will fetch a Star Seraph monster from your deck to your hand. Which is the other And one. Sovereignty can special summon itself from the hand. If once you normal summon a Star Seraph monster. Or special summon a Star Seraph monster. All so right. if you summon one. Now you can set it up so that you can play Scepter, search Sovereignty to your hand, and then special summon two Sovereignties. All of these cards let you draw cards when you're summoning them. And then you can make a rank four that requires three Level fours. Ooh, okay. And that's, of course, pretty powerful. Yep. So you're special summoning, so you're summoning three cards, drawing three cards, and then bringing a huge monster out. So we have, we have uh, talked to some of the best players that have won past events or made it to the top cut of the past events. And uh, they are like, split down in the middle, I would say. Some of them say, I, I really like this combo. I'm going to play it. And the other half says, I'm not going to go for it because it's only really good if you have both cards. Yeah, but you, you do need both cards to be able to do it. I mean, looking at what we've got today as well, speaking of... Yes. Speaking of world-class players, we have uh, Merlin Schumacher and Sona Gunga yes. playing against each other, which is Sona is actually playing Necros, a uh, mm -hmm. big elephant in the room, as you like to say. Yes. And uh, Merlin, Merlin is one of the guys that is going with it all, that is bound to make its big compact this weekend. Yes. Interestingly, although there is a lot of hype around Star Saurus at the moment, he's not actually running the Star Saurus engine. So yeah. it's going to be interesting. He's running a lot of uh, hand traps and things just to kind of disrupt Necros. We will talk a little bit more about strategy throughout the day. So let's take you to the feature match table for our first round today, where you will see both Merlin and Sona. In case you're having troubles making out some of the cards on the table, we got our app here that is going to show you on the right-hand side of the screen which cards these guys are holding on to. And I can change that right away. This is Sona's opening hand. Don't be confused by the names below. Uh, Merlin is sitting on the left and Sona is sitting on the right. Uh, behind those guys, you see our uh, staff crew, uh, Michael on the left, well, you no longer see them now, and uh, Ryan on the right, uh, who are actually putting in all the information. They are feeding us that information so we can show you what cards are being played. So this is Merlin kicking things off. Very f uh, fast opening, I guess, for the Shadol deck with a Foolish Burial. Uh, it's Foolish Burial getting Squamata, sending, sh I believe, Hedgehog uh, to the graveyard there yeah. as well. Now... He is, if you look at the hand, running the cards that will essentially counter that Necros. Breakthrough skill, always a good card. It's going to negate any sort of effects that are coming out, stop any searches that might happen. But 
even better to stop those mistakes, to, well, to stop those searches, is Mistake. Yes, Mistake. Very powerful card. I remember a, a game that was decided when a mistake was flipped, and basically from then on, on, it was just over. It shuts down Necros. If you have that and a Vanity's Emptiness out, Necros can't really do anything other than wait for cards to get rid yeah. of those two cards. So Merlin is going to town here with a very good opening, I would say. He's set up and ready. And uh, let's take another look at Sona's hand. He did draw into a reinforcement of the army, uh, but he starts with the Kaleidoscope. This is one of the most important cards, of course, in the Necros archetype. Those three ritual spell cards are so, so powerful. Yep, they have uh, the ability to search themselves when you banish them from, the, you banish graveyard. Them from the graveyard. So you're ready um, to be able to play your monsters and Kaleidoscope especially. Yep. So he's, he's sending the, um, the Herald to the graveyard? Y yes. Kaleidoscope can actually send monsters from your extra deck to the graveyard. Yes. That triggers its effect, which will allow him to search his deck for yet another ritual spell card. Yep, but unfortunately Mistake was chained there. Yeah, there we go. And th this is where we can see that Mistake is such a powerful card in this particular matchup. So uh, wh what's uh, going through Sona's hand here? Uh, head. <laughs> what does he think after that um, opening from, from Merlin with the Mistake? Well, all he can actually really do at the moment is attack because there isn't any cards that he can play anymore. Right. Well, he could normal summon the Shurit, but that doesn't really help him. He's setting a reinforcement of the army as some sort of bluff currently. Um, doing that now is incredibly powerful. I mean, mm. a, long yep. a long time ago with Necros, so by that I mean last event, you'd see <laughs> that uh, they didn't really play any sort of trap cards or any sort of um, anything to really protect yep. them because they didn't need to. But now they're running Solemn Scolding. Yes, uh, this is also uh, one of the stories. W with the new Forbidden and Limited list, Necros had to cut down on copies of Brian Egg, and um, very often they are playing the hand, so-called hand traps instead, like the Effect Veiler, and sometimes the Maxi, I think. Yeah. And um, this is also hurting some of the rogue decks that usually have to rely a lot on their monster effects. And if they get negated, then they have even less of a chance to do well against Necros. Well, it also kill Star Seraphs as well, because if you summon the first one and then you can't special summon anything else, you have two monsters that aren't doing anything, especially because Sovereignty can only be used for an XE sum of a monster that requires three or more monsters. Yep. So um, Merlin is flipping the Falco, which is going to allow him to bring something back. No, he has been effect valid there. Unicorn, of course, has the effect of negating cards, negating monster effects from the extra deck. So he's playing it Cautiously. It's very interesting. We, we got both players having something that shuts down the opponent's effects here. But <laughs> but then Blackluster Soldier hits the field. <laughs> A sudden Blackluster Soldier appears, yeah. So um, is Merlin going to attack with the Blackluster Soldier? Mm, it would be. I think nobody fears Mirror Force anymore. I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason why is because nobody feared Mirror Force, so everybody started playing Mirror Force. Okay. Well, so the big question is, uh, Sona, we, we saw this. Every time Merlin made a move, uh, he summoned his monsters. Sona was touching the reinforcement, like indicating that he could activate it, or it's a card that is relevant, trying to bait the opponent or make him believe that there's a life card sitting down there when, in fact, it is a reinforcement of the army that is not doing anything sitting in that back row. So will Sona's... I'm not sure if I should call it a mind game, but will it play out what, what Sona is trying to do here? Well, what you really don't want to happen is for Solemn Scolding to hit you. Uh, it's pay 3,000 life points, and it's essentially a Solemn Judgment. As, but it has to be the only, only face-down card on your side of the field. Mm. So Merlin is going with the safe option of banishing the Unicorn. And uh, well, there's an attack with Falco to get the first damage in of the day. Tiny, tiny damage. Yeah. But every point of damage counts. Then again, you hear the veterans saying that life points really don't matter as long as you got more than zero. Yes. Life, po life points are a resource. Sona did draw into a chin releaser of rituals. This is definitely not what he wanted to draw into. Mm. No, because he can't really add a uh, ritual spell card to his hand at all. Yeah. That is the key card here. That mistake is making all the difference. And something we don't see every day here. The chin is being summoned to the field and used as a beat stick. Yep, he's just attacking over there. 
So since Merlin was not going for the attack option with Black Luster Soldier, was it the right move to special summon it in an attack position? Because he would still lose it to a mirror force. And then there's also the chance, I, I don't think that Necross is really known for this, but um, a number 101, the shark? Mm, possibly. It's not really known for it, because it's quite hard for it to... Yeah, but but wouldn't it be the safer option to place the Black Luster Soldier in the in defense position? If I remember correctly, Black Luster Soldier only has 2,500 defense. Yeah, and yeah. So he, he just thinks it's, it's safer to do it this way. Yeah. This time he is attacking, and they can see the indication by pointing the finger on the Black Luster Soldier, moving the card slightly upwards. This is 3,000 damage just from the second attack, and Sona is now sitting in a very desperate position. Uh, Sona on the right-hand side, Merlin on the left. And Sona... They know. Um, Sona just passing play. He drew into Senju, and Senju is also not a very good card when there's a mistake face-up on the field. Uh, allows you, after it's summoned, to add a ritual spell or a ritual... I think it's just the ritual spell to the hand. Yeah. It's sent you the 10,000 hands, gets you both. And a winder hits the field as well, and this is game over. All right, so 1 0 oh, for the Shadol deck. All right, why is Sona not um, wrapping things up here? Um, I think he's. Possibly playing a bit of a mind game there. And also, sometimes y you do get that little bit of extra information by watching your opponent perform his very last move, basically. And, uh, and this is where Sona yeah. Yeah, packs things up. Before revealing the monster, we should note, which is also very important, that he's not giving away what he's, well, what card he had set there. Yeah. Because sometimes you have like a, a special tech card or something, and you don't want your opponent to see that tech card. In that particular case, not so much because Senju can hardly be called a tech card. In an Not really. <laughs> no, it's more <laughs> staple. Yeah, but those those tiny differences uh, they can have a big effect, especially over the course of eight rounds. Sona is, in fact, not a big fan of a feature match that early in the day. Something that he pe repeatedly points out when I'm talking to him at the start of the day. And does he give you a reason why? Uh, yes, because he doesn't want everybody to know what he's playing. Oh well, that does make sense. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Make I sense. would always worry about that. If, yeah, I, if yeah. I ever played in a yeah. YCS. But we thought that this is such a high-profile match between those two greats. Merlin, of course, known for well flying over to the US and doing well at the YCS over there. A couple of times, in fact. And uh, Sona was at just one of the recent events he made it to the top cut. And uh, now Sona is sitting with his back against the wall on the right-hand side, looking over his side deck to swap some cards. So what would you be introducing here against Shadol. There's a Denko Seca in Sona's side deck, for yeah, example. Denko Seca would help with that there. Mystical Space Typhoon's definitely going in, uh, another one. Just to uh, basically make sure he can get rid of the mistakes. Vanity's Emptiness hits hard, but also hits Sona quite hard as well. Yeah. What about Royal Decree? Not so much. Um, well, there is uh, Mistake. Mistake. He wants to shut down Mistake. Bottomless, Mind Crush, Sinister Shadow Games, Breakthrough Skill. And Vanities himself, so yeah, there is quite a lot there that he'd like to shut down. And w what is uh, Merlin's strategy here? Because sometimes you see players predicting that you that the opponent is going to bring in something that is going to be good against their key cards, like Mistake. So they side them out to make sure that the opponent suddenly has cards in their deck that really don't help them at all. Well, looking at it at the moment, there's Anti-Spell Fragrance, which would hurt Necros quite a bit, because they can't activate their Ritual Spell cards immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a Vanity's Fiend in there. Got three mystical space typhoons, none in the main deck. Yes, we, this was a, a big topic in the in the past events. Not so much at the moment. It, it doesn't seem like anybody is playing the three copies of MST in the main deck anymore. Uh, Necros, and there is two currently in Sonas, and he's got an option to put a third in on his side deck just in case. It looks like he's really well. There's been a, a, a shift with Necros. Um, whilst I was out yesterday, I saw people were running Exiled Force and DD Warrior Lady, mm -hmm. and there's an Exiled Force in Sona's side deck as well. Um, that's basically to get over Jin Locks. Right. Okay, so it cannot be... It's not going to get stopped by a Forbidden Lance or anything like that. Anything other cool tech cards that you see in these lists here? Hmm. There's 
Pero Pero Corpus, is that? Yeah, Pero Pero Cerperos. Hmm. Trying to remember what that does. Yeah, it's a it's a tech card that Merlin is running uh, that we haven't really seen before, I think. It says if you take battle damage, uh, damage by battle or an opponent's card effect while it is in the graveyard, you can banish it from the graveyard and then target one card on the field and destroy it. That is very, very good. Yeah, and he has he has some ways to send it to the graveyard, right? Uh, he's got a foolish burial there. And what's, uh, math petition, of course. All right, and we're ready for the second game. With Sona just revealing his hand to our helpful guys, Ryan and Michael, that are going to be on their feet the whole day. Yes, they will be. And we get to sit down in a chair <laughs> watching them. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, there is also Artifact Lancia, which um, I'd like to mention is in Merlin's deck. When I was out yesterday amongst the players, um, it was like they all suddenly had an epiphany and realized that uh, Lancia is really, really good in this format and were suddenly <laughs> trying to get them. <laughs> all right. So Ooh. So Let's see what he's got set down. Now, he did put the Vanity's Fiend and the Anti-Spell Fragrance in. So Anti-Spell Fragrance is now face up on the field, ready to stop anything happening. And there's a Manchu. I believe that's off the 10,000 hands. Yes. Yeah, count those hands. You can see every single one on the artwork. Okay, so again, this is Merlin's opening in the second game. Interesting decision from Sona's end to let Merlin go first, isn't it? Um, not necessarily, because he doesn't fear a gin lock. <laughs> Basically, yeah. you, you want to go first in a mirror because you don't want to be the first person to be gin locked. All right. In anything else, going second is not a disadvantage to you because you're getting more cards in your hand. But don't you want to go for the chin lock before your opponent can do anything? Mm, it depends. It if depends. you if you want more cards, then yeah, it is really how you feel about it. Now, he's got an an okay hand. He's got a lot of search. Yeah, and so far no mistake for Merlin. We of course don't know if Merlin is still playing that mistake. He might have sided out of mistake. Although I'm. Um, I don't think I would. I'd, I'd be surprised yeah. if he decided that mistake. Uh, so he's just got a Clawsless there. Clawsless has gone and got... There's I didn't quite see that there. He yeah. put it on the table. No, but there's a... Brian Eck Brian is gone Eck. to go and get Unicor. Yeah, he's running through his deck. This is one of the main reasons why Necross is such a powerful deck. You get so many options to search your deck and make sure that you're going to end up with the right cards in your hand. So the odds are ever in your favor. Interestingly, uh, that wasn't a fact valid by Merlin. Yeah. Which is something that I probably would have done at that point. Because he's set up to be able to make sure that his opponent can't really do anything. But doesn't Merlin want to save that effect valid, for example, for Trishula? He, he could use it for that. It really uh, although he doesn't have anything in the graveyard yet. Oh, and There's a uh, Hedgehog, I believe, actually has quite a high defense. Yeah, it's going to stay on the No, field. it hasn't. It's got 200. Oh. Uh, he's just flipping a face up, activating effect, and then yeah. sending it to the graveyard, which is what you should do. A lot of people <laughs> just take shortcuts and put it straight in the graveyard. Right, just to make 100% sure that everybody's on the same page yeah. regarding the effect resolutions. Yeah, it flips face up, the effect happens, and then it gets destroyed, sent to the graveyard. All right. So, Sona still got two copies of reinforcement of the army. Uh, what does he have in terms of targets? There's a warrior lady and... Uh, and Shurit. Shurit, yep. yeah. So three targets for two copies of reinforcement. It's also very interesting. Now he's set his entire hand there, which is all spells, and one royal decree, which is not going to be nice when the anti-spell fragrance is shut down. Yeah, so I would say this is very bad news for, for Merlin. So Falco is happening. And bringing back the Hedgehog. Yep. And he's tributing for Vanity's Fiend, <laughs> meaning that there is no more special summons. So many answers in Merlin's deck. It's quite, quite interesting. The Vanity's Fiend is a card that sometimes doesn't show up on our app. Let's try if it's... No, no we don't have it in there. So it's a, it's a 2,400 attack guy, just like a Monarch, really. It is literally Vanity's Emptiness on legs. It yes. is, it is the card that Vanity's Emptiness is named after. So, suddenly everything's swinging in Merlin's favor again, I, I feel. Mm -hmm. But Sona is going to have a couple of options here. 
with those reinforcements to go searching. Well, all he can really do is go and find Shurik. Or DD Worry Lady. Worry DD Worry Lady. Lady Worry Lady can get rid of uh, yeah. anything, really. Um, the other cards, uh, that's pretty much it for. for or oh Merlin also said two more cards, and that's an El Shadol Fusion. There we go. And a Shadol Fusion. Because, of course, anti spell fragrance is also hitting himself. Well, yes. not anymore. With but that El Shadol Fusion is a quick play anyway, and you, yeah. he can't special summon. So. so there is the first. Reinforcement of the army. Such an old card still being played. Yes. I remember the good old warrior toolbox. Oh, yeah. Where you just had a couple of warrior monsters that could answer any problem that your opponent is, is throwing at you, really. Yeah. And those good old days are coming back at the moment. Yes, they are. Well, DD Warrior Lady's definitely back. Yeah. And Exile Force sometimes. And I've heard uh, some players, I think they went for Bull Blader instead of the Warrior Lady. Now, he's gone and got a Sherrit. Although he does have a second. He does one. have the second, yeah, yeah. that's fine. So he's just filled his hand with the materials to be able to start ritual summoning. Yeah, thinning out his deck some, some more. Now, he does have a Clausalus, a Shuret, and a Unicorn. And he has two ritual cards as well. Yeah, so we're going to see something from, from Sona here. Yes. After he got rid of the Vanities... Fiend. So this is kind of good news for Merlin because he's he's not gonna. He um, got a second shirt. He's not gonna take a lot of damage here. Oh, um. Oh, now I'm surprised to be honest. Was I'm very. How does how does Sona get rid of the event? He's uh, fiend without Warrior Lady. He doesn't <laughs> have anything <laughs> on the field either. Okay. Um. The correct answer is definitely not he doesn't, at least from, from Sona's perspective. All right, so some more searches after he used the Unicore to bring back Bryonek and discarded the Bryonek again. Yeah. So Sona now searched for, is that, I can't quite make it out, but we're going to have it on our app in just a second. Just saw a lot of stars, so it's either Valkyrus Probably a Valkyrus. Yeah, Valkyrus would would be a good idea. Yeah, there it is. Okay, is there a chance that Sona sided out of the Warrior Lady? Because I really can't. Oh, it's very possible. Because he wouldn't have thought... Yes, because Didi Warrior Lady is mostly in there just to deal with a the gin log. Log. So I don't think he realized that he was going to be coming up against a Vanity's Feet. So there's a very... Uh, I think that, that must be the explanation, really. Wh why would Sona still play the Warrior Lady? But why are you then running two copies of war Reinforcement? He's actually maxing out. He's got three copies of that card in his deck. Yeah. Well, maybe he did side into two copies, and now he's only got his two targets in deck. Now he's searched all of that. And without the Warrior Lady, he's really looking at a big, big problem in form of the Vanity's Fiend. Oh, Hedgehog has been flipped face up. So uh, it's so interesting. Sona found a way to deal with the anti-spell fragrance. One of the best cards that Merlin has to stop all of the big plays, at least immediately stop them um, from the Necros deck. And then Merlin just drops a different bomb and Sonas get rid of the answer in between rounds. And now he has to deal yeah. with it. And I don't think he has anything really. Mm -hmm. So uh, Merlin He's getting poked by a hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> Merlin is holding on to the effect veil as well, which is going to be very important. And he just tributes set to the beast as well. So he's going to get some nice card draw out of that. And Merlin is just confirming when did you set which card, just to make sure that he keeps track of what is a life card, what is possibly just a bluff. And uh, Sona really needs something right now. He's got the Shurid, he's got the Valkyrus, and he did draw into a Denko Seka. One of the cards passed. that we said is really good, but not in that particular scenario. No. They're going to draw two and drop one. What's he got in his hand there? He's got a Vela, Falco. Fusion, and he's dropping Falco, which can't special summon anything, of course. And he should have got one more card there. Yeah, it's going to be in there in a second. And now... And it was another beast. <sighs> wow. It's really good for Merlin. I believe Merlin's... Oh, he's 
banishing a card there. I think that's... Uh, is it already Sona's turn again? Because otherwise I don't see yeah, how he... Yeah, he's just he Yeah, there we go. It's, it is Sona's turn again. He did banish. And now he's found essential. Yes, he doesn't have any monsters. So he's able to banish and get himself a ritual spell. That's a unicorn. So Sona can thin out his deck. That's good news, generally speaking, because it allows him to get his hands on some of the answers that he has, mm -hmm. the remaining answers in his deck. And what do we have there? We've got... I do think that the Book of Eclipse has been sided out. It's possible. He did a uh, Valkyrus. Yeah. That's why he banished that card there. Yeah. Um, so he's just gone and got himself... He's played the Manju there. Got himself... He's got himself a... Um, Unicorn discarded to get Brianak. Brianak has got him another Valkyrie. Valkyrus. Yeah. So lots of searching going on, but if you can't special summon them, what are they going to do for you? Yeah. So That's um, the biggest issue. W what kind of options is Sona looking at here? He's got a Raigeki. I don't think... Actually, there's a chance he also sided out of Raigeki against it all. I, I don't think he would have sided out of Raigeki. I mean, the only if thing he goes that for a big push. is a Winder. Okay. So let's assume he's still playing the Raigeki. He possibly cited out of the Book of Eclipse because it's only really good against the Chin Lock. It's one of the, your, your few answers. Yep. And is there anything that he can introduce from the side deck? He's definitely not playing an Exile Force. He's definitely not playing the, the Warrior Lady anymore. Exile Force was in the side deck. So he, he can't even play his own breakthrough skill because he's uh, played his role, played a Royal <laughs> Decree. <laughs> okay, so what options does Sona have in his whole deck to deal with that Vanity's Fiend? It's going to be Raigeki. And that's it. I'm effect. I'm looking over the list and I'm effect Veiler. Yeah. But effect Veiler only works on the opponent's turn. Yeah, which true. means you cannot use it. I think this Vanity's Fiend is going to be game deciding. And another Valkyrie just happened. So Sona is buying time. Well, that's something. But at the same time Merlin is gaining more and more of an advantage. He's now got a second effect Veiler, so Interesting that he didn't stop again the search. Because stopping the search would have meant that he probably could have attacked over and... Yeah, but I, I don't think that Merlin is in a rush here, to be honest. Yeah. Merlin is perfectly aware of the fact that Sona... I mean, he knows that there's no Warrior Lady in the deck, no Exile Force, because otherwise Sona would have searched for them with the, with the reinforcement. Yeah. So he can count the outs of Sona's deck because he's familiar with the matchup, of course. So he will think, okay, there's a Raigeki waiting for me, possibly a Book of Moon or something. And I think that's pretty much it. And there's an Artifact Lance here in hand, which means that during your opponent's turn, your opponent can't banish cards. So if he did that in the draw phase... He oh, and there's a second Vanity <laughs> Fiend. <laughs> Just to add insult to injury. <laughs> wow. So there's the Lance here. Uh, Flancia was attributed now. Sona did draw into a mystical space typhoon card he's looking for here. If the Lancia happened now, he wouldn't be able to make any searches. So, this is really going Merlin's way so far. If you were Sona, what would you be thinking? Um... Oh God, I've lost. That's that's probably one of the things <laughs> I'd be thinking. <laughs> Why is this happening to me in round <laughs> one? Why is this happening to me? Oh, it's always round. <laughs> Why do I always get feature matches really early on? Yeah. Although he al he doesn't always get yeah, them that early. I know. Yeah. But <laughs> it's um. And there it is. There it is. The yeah. handshake. Wow. What a clean sweep by Merlin yeah. Schumacher. We got to give it up to him. Such a commanding victory and what really selling Sona down the water with that sideboarding technique. Yeah. He's not playing the Vanity's uh, Fiend in the main deck, does he? No, no he doesn't. No, he doesn't. He, he has sided them both in. And I think that, well, the idea is because Necros are playing DD Warrior Lady and things yeah. like that at the moment. Yeah. And they only side them in for things that like the Jinlock. 
Oh, they, they have them in the main deck against the Chinlock. Yeah, and then they, they side them out. Yeah, they side out when they're not playing against Necros. So if you win game one, you're guaranteed to win game two if you can get a Vanity's Fiend out and keep it there. And perfect answers in both games from Merlin Schumacher. We really have to give it up to him. Yeah. Um, I think that was excellently executed. And Sona is not going to be in a good mood now. No. Yeah, I wouldn't trade with him for the world in, in this situation. <laughs> Normally, I would be like, yeah, his dueling skills, I could use those. But right here, not so much. Yeah, he uh, he will not be very happy about that defeat, especially because um, he's on stream with that. That, that was... <laughs> that. Wow. Yeah, that was, yeah, that you was not a, nice. At a loss <laughs> for words and very understandably yeah. so. Um, so... We are going to have Merlin over for a quick interview because this round was really, really short. Yeah. What questions can we ask Merlin, in your opinion? I mean, we definitely want to talk about his, his sideboarding strategy here yeah, with um, uh, the Vanity's Fiend. And I want to know, is he still going to play mistakes in games two and three? Yes, that would be a good thing to ask him. I mean, what I'd really like to know is if uh, he feels that Artifact Lancia is a, a card that everybody should definitely be running now. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said before, it seemed that everybody had an epiphany and just started running around after them. <laughs> I don't know whether somebody was just telling them <laughs> everything. <laughs> uh, whether he kind of anticipated the fact that DD Warrior Lady was going to be sided out as yeah. well, uh, yeah. that, that people are playing it also. Although, knowing Merlin, it's a pretty safe assumption, to be honest. It's worth asking. Because yeah. it, it could have been... I, I doubt it would have been fluky because he's a high-skilled player, but no. it's nice to say... Are you? Are, were you planning on that? Is that something that people should be thinking yeah. about? And um, another question for you, as our expert, is that what you expected to see in that matchup? With all of the anti Necros Cards stuff that is in Merlin's deck, mm. mostly. Okay. I'll be honest with you. He, it's he not that surprising. He, that it like the 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 thing is, this one big deck which is Necros, and every other deck. Is designed to yeah. try and beat Necros. It's got a big, big target on the head. Yeah, it means that they get worse matchups against every other deck, though. That, that's yeah. the problem. Everybody's trying to beat Necros, but then they struggle with everything else. So, so if, if you would have played in this event, would you have been playing Necros or something to combat Necros? I would probably be playing Tellers. Okay. Uh, because there's a lot of special summoning. Deltaros mm. is mm. lovely. Triver. Triver is fantastic. I love Triver, Bouncing Call of the Haunted, and Oasis yeah, of Dragon yeah. Souls. Quite, a, quite a few good moves you've there, Things there, like yeah. that, yeah. I would definitely be playing Talos. All right. Well, after that, I got to say that it all seems really good. Yeah. Well positioned in this particular field, which is so surprising because Necros was the deck that wiped Shadol off the radar. Yeah. Uh, and everybody was like, okay, Shadol is no longer competitive. So, whoa, let's hear it from the horse's mouth. Let's talk to Merlin Schumacher in just a second. Bring him over and ask him a couple of questions. Why should all suddenly is such a force to be reckoned with? So, guys, don't go anywhere. We're going to run a few quick commercials and then we're going to be right back. That is almost it for our round one feature match. And like we said before, seven more rounds today. So seven more rounds. Yeah. <laughs> You, how are you feeling at the moment? I'm feeling good. About round six, I may be uh, flagging a little bit, okay. but, but we'll see. We'll okay. see. All right. So that's it for now. We'll be right back. <laughs> 